Hi, I'm Blake Pellin, General Manager of Cunis Toyota in Galesburg, Illinois. Today we're going to be doing another episode of Cunis Car Combos with Mr. James Noonan, the high school golf team coach, and our brand new 2023 Tacoma TRD Sport. We're going to go take this truck for a ride and have some great conversation. <music> Yes, we are in the 2023 Tacoma TRD Sport, and there's a couple different trims. Um, but this is this is uh, a very nice mid-size truck. It's not a full size, but as you can see, you got plenty of space in here. What do you think? Right, of the truck. Yeah, no, this is nice. I actually have a truck. I have my first truck. Uh, it's a full-size truck that I drive right now. Um, honestly, probably maybe a little bit bigger than what I need. Uh, <laughs> uh, one that's a little it's bit more mid size the case. Honestly, would probably be. Uh, more than enough truck. You know, this is this is very nice. First time I've ever been in Tacoma. You think you could take, make something work at this size compared uh, yeah, to your truck? I mean, there's, yeah, I, oh, absolutely. Yeah, like I said, the uh, you know the full size is nice, but the times that I've needed, you know, that extra space is it's nice to have. It. Is yeah, it's 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 nice to have it, I guess, when you need it. But that's only came up probably. Well, the good news twice, is is three years. What people don't know is we do rent vehicles. You can come run the truck. Oh yeah, there you that's go. Nice. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I'll tell people that because now that I have the truck, I get to experience the, hey, can you help me move? Yep. You know, I'm on that list now, so. <laughs> um, how long have you played golf? What got you started within golf? Sure. And uh, you know, I played I played a lot of golf as a kid. It was one of those things that um, I think like a lot of people who are exposed to a sport like golf, my dad played. And so, um, you know, I was kind of introduced to it. Yeah. Uh, probably around age eight or nine with my my dad um, I, was, I was fortunate that you know he took me out and we, we played quite a bit when I was a kid um, I didn't play for about 20 years in the middle I got busy just doing other things living life coach basketball uh, you know it was always hard to find time to to set aside four hours to go golf or whatever yeah, you're um, a pretty athletic guy yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so so now I'm, I've kind of found an opportunity to get back into it. I've got a daughter who enjoys playing, and so we are, we're able to use that kind of as my excuse to get on golf more, right? So I'm spending time with my kid, and let's go to the golf course. So I've started to play a lot more again in the past, I don't know, five, six, seven years, and you know the scores are starting to reflect that I've played more, but I'm still not, I still don't think I'm as good as I was when I was 12 years old. No, well... <laughs> Yeah, it gets it gets tough. Uh, yeah, I think I handled the emotional side better when I was a kid, to be honest. Of course, yeah. you didn't have the aches and pains when you were twelve. That's yeah, that's that's very true too. Very true. That does happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, now Bunker Links is your home course yes. for the school, right? Yeah. Yep. We're very lucky to to uh, have them as our home course. We have started the practice on occasion this year out at Lake Bracken just for a different look. Um, but yeah, Bunker is where we we spend ninety percent of our time. Um, Brian Lukey, the pro out there, is he really takes care of us. He's he's always looking out for us, looking out for the kids. Uh, he was out on the range last night, kind of helping some kids and, and talking through some things. So we're very lucky. It's a it's an awesome course, and and they all take care of us out there. So they maintain it pretty well. It's, I've yeah. been there a few times. I actually really like Bunker. You know, I, was, I agree. I was telling Brian that yesterday. In terms of all the courses we see, um, in terms of like the condition, right? Bunker is always always top notch it's always in the in as good a shape as any course that we go to no yeah that's it and you got swangataha here and you guys played there too so sure, you know we don't uh we don't really since i've been the coach here at least uh we haven't really had a relationship with swangataha uh to well, get maybe out now's the time to start absolutely to get out there and play well Any, anybody who's higher up there there you go right well and we do have uh we do have one of our our varsity players who's a freshman right now that that is his home course right and so he's he knows all the people out there and and yeah we're starting to starting to talk a little bit see if there's not an opportunity for us to get out there maybe on occasion but uh, you know like i said bunker is awesome it's not like we really need a new home it's just nice to get out once in a while and, and see something different but for the most part bunker it has everything that we need yeah. now you you've coached many sports sure. yeah. however 
you, you enjoy being the golf coach now. What aspects, what do you like better about coaching golf than you do basketball or vice versa? Uh, you know, it's, I mean, they're honestly entirely different. You know, during a basketball game, you, you know, you pace up and down the sideline and, you know, there's a lot of intensity and, um, you know, in game, there's a lot of in game coaching and some strategy and some adjustments and things like that. Right. Uh, you know, obviously with a with a golf match, it's it's a, it's a lot different. It's almost entirely different. I spend a lot of my time parked underneath a shade tree. You know, you, see, you go out, and you get ahead, and you watch you watch your six kids kind of come through, and you know, you talk to them, you make sure they're staying hydrated. If a kid's frustrated, you might try to talk to him a little bit and and get him in a better place mentally. But you know, there's not a, a ton of coaching that's really going on at that point. You're not really looking to tweak swings and and do a whole lot of that stuff in the middle of a round. So um, it's a little bit different in that regard. You know, like I said, it's obviously uh, much more relaxed. I, I kind of feel like it's a little bit more helpless as a coach on the sideline. You know, I can't necessarily call timeout if I need to and try to stop the momentum or right. you know anything like that. So uh, there's times that you are a little bit helpless out there, but you know, it is what it is. But yeah, as far as which one I prefer, you know, I think they're, they're so different. I can't even say I prefer one over the other. You know, I, I, there's there's times that I really do enjoy the the nice relaxed pace of a golf being outside. Yeah, that is a big difference because it's not like, hey, we got five seconds left, we're down two points. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, by the end of uh, by the end of a basketball game, sometimes you know, my, I've got marker all over my face. I'm sweaty. I probably you know chewed some fingernails too low. There's all kinds of stuff going on that right. doesn't seem to occur. You nope. Know, like, all you gotta do is swing straight. That's right. Get the ball within ten foot. Make the putt. That's it. Well, it, good. you know, and a lot of times that is what you're talking about. Is just hey, you know, you gotta have a short memory. You gotta breathe. Let's move on. Next shot. And, and you know, and that's that's usually what I'm trying to do is just redirect kids to quit living in the past and then think about the next shot that they're on their way to it. To I remember last time we talked because we had mentioned just the mental focus it takes in golf because I mean it is a physical game it can be yes but a lot of it is all mental. Sure. And yeah. once you start getting down that slippery slope it's really hard to recover. Yeah and you know if I mean if you're playing basketball for me and you were frustrated there's there's ways you can translate that frustration and use it to benefit you on a basketball court right you right. could maybe dive into the, or dive after a loose ball or it's going to motivate you to maybe be a little more aggressive to go get a rebound or stand in and take a charge something like that i have personally yet to meet anyone who's a better golfer when they're angry i just i have it i'm sure there's some people out there you know i've heard jordan spieth is a guy who likes to play with that that level of intensity fiery yeah, fiery, yeah and you know this and that and we've all seen guys like tiger woods you know have their their moments on a golf course uh, but you know when you're just angry and you're you know, hitting your club off your bag, you're throwing clubs in a pond. That's not helping anybody be a better golfer. I've never. It's it's kind of fun to watch. Though. <laughs> it is right, but I've, I've never seen anybody, you know, be better because they were frustrated. So a lot of it is, is you know, just trying to reset their minds and get back to a place where they're just happy to be out there and go playing golf, and they're focused on their process. We talk about process a lot. You know, um, I think if you could just focus on your pre-shot process and your routine. Consistency. Yeah, if you're consistent with that, then you can hopefully take a lot of the emotion out of things and you can just kind of hit your next shot. Yeah, I've had, I had a buddy that, his name is, we'll just leave it, his name is Jeff. I won't mention his <laughs> last name. Uh, but I've seen him uh, break several clubs. I, I've never seen somebody break one, a tee box marker before, but he successfully have done that. You know, I actually that is one thing that I uh, I have seen someone do take their take their driver and hit the the tee box marker like it was a it was a ball. Yeah, that was years ago. That wasn't good. I've I've been with people who did. I, one time a a friend threw an iron. You know, he hit a on a par three. He hit a pitching wedge into the water, and then the club club followed <laughs> soon thereafter. <laughs> But that's been all, you know, playing personal golf. I remember the last time we spoke, you asked me as far as like. That was the happy deal. Yeah, crazy stuff Anybody? during the matches. None of that. You're all. Yeah, right. Yeah, but no, I haven't seen anything too crazy in IHSA competitions, but I've seen all kinds of stuff playing with my friends or whatever. Yeah, well, it's always fun to hear that guy out on the golf course dropping an F-bomb. <laughs> right. <laughs> you, you know he didn't do something right. Right. So I think another good question, especially one that I've always liked is what inspirational quote, what's your favorite inspirational quote? What do you do to get your guys? And I know it's tough in the golf game to get your guys jacked up to go out there. Basketball is a little different, right? right? You're trying to build up that motivation. Whereas in golf, you still want the same motivation, but you're more level headed in the fact that, hey, keep calm. Sure. <laughs> Don't freak out. Right. 
and right. yes, we're going. You're going to play a good round. So, is there any quotes, motivational speeches that you have? Anything that you use to get those guys level-headed before a tournament? You know, not really. I think that uh, you know one of my favorite quotes. I, I was way more into quotes when I was a basketball coach uh, than I am, you know, now as a golf coach. But something that we've always talked about too. You're even if you're on the right track, you're going to get ran over if you just stay there, right? And so. You know, that's just talking about just every day. We're going to try to improve. We're going to try to keep getting better because if you're not, then you're kind of getting worse in the big picture because you got to assume that everyone else is getting better. Um, Correct. You know, as far as going into a big match, uh, a lot of it with golf is a little bit different. You know, you, you don't necessarily want to have them too amped up. You know, if there are nerves a lot of the times, which is, you know, 100% normal, I just get try to get the kids to understand that uh, to turn that into a sense of excitement instead of instead of a sense of fear. You right. know, if you're if you're standing over your first shot, and that first shot can be very hard. You know, a lot of us are okay golfers when no one's around. Um, when all of a sudden you have, yeah, when you have you know 20 people watching you and you're in a competition and you know if you get off to a bad start, not only is it going to be embarrassing, but it's going to hurt you in a in a competitive uh, means or whatever. Um, well, it's the there's same a lot of pressure thing. on that first shot. So even if you're just golfing with friends, but all of a sudden the force on behind you just trolls up because they got yeah, through absolutely. the hole quicker. All of a sudden you could really, <laughs> yeah. you, you don't know what it is because right. you don't really care what they think. But all of a sudden now yeah. you shake your drive. No, and that's and it's, like, well. yeah, and it's it's really amazing how much just that, you know, you start to tense it up and, and tighten up, and that has a direct impact on your golf swing. Yeah, and a bunch of outside. Yeah, so. You know, once again, I just try to just just talk to them about, hey, it's cool to be excited. Let's be happy. Let's be excited to be here. But when it comes time for that first shot, start your process. Right. <laughs> Stick to your routine and just get lost in that that process or that routine, and you can hopefully block everything out. You know, I've got, as I've said a bunch of times, I've got the basketball background, and you know, I coached that for a real long time. And I think about golf shots a lot like shooting free throws. And you know, the, the reason basketball players have a routine, maybe you spin it, you drill it three times, and then you, you take your breath and you, you shoot your free throw is that's a means of focus. It's a means of blocking everything out and you know, taking the crowd and all the nerves and trying to eliminate that and just really making sure you have a very minute focus on the task at hand. And you know, if you, if you can trust your routine and you've practiced that way enough, I think that it can help you handle the emotions of things. Consistency is the spice of life. Yeah, and yes, absolutely. That's all, I mean, really, that's what we're trying to do is mimic the same swing over and over and over <laughs> yes. and over and over. Yeah, if you could do it every single time, well, you'd be, you'd be a pro. Right, you know, that's 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 so true. That's yeah, so true. So I've seen them shank some shots. Well, and that's the thing, you know, I was talking to one of my, uh, one of my administrators who's also a, a parent of one of my golfers right now, and we were talking about him and he was, uh, he'd watched you know, some of you guys play at Deer Run and um, in the John Deere Classic. <clears throat> and he was just commenting on how those guys hit a lot more bad shots than you know. They just don't show them on television. But when you really do follow people or you watch all the groups come through throughout the course of the day, yeah, they're not all, you know, throwing bullseyes. They've they've got a lot of, um, they spray it a lot more than we know. <laughs> and they're having to recover. And, you know, so they're human. They're way more human than we, than we believe. Because when you watch them on TV, it's just amazing how they... They never seem to. to I went mess for it. Up. I didn't make it. I tin cupped it. Right. I mean, it's just it's unbelievable. Their miss, their misses are, are still ten foot, you know, ten foot putts, ten feet from the cup. So right. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> what is your what's your favorite golf? Movie? And you can't say Happy Gilmore. Okay. Because we got to use an actual. As I think everybody's as far as comedy goes right. and entertainment, Happy Gilmore's probably up there. But you got tin cup. Bagger Vance. I'm trying to think if there's anything. Am I missing something there? Oh, I mean, there's Caddyshack, obviously. Caddyshack, well, of course. The Greatest so. Game, I believe, or whatever the one about, and the one about Ben Hogan that's uh, like the greatest game. Right. Um, well, if you're taking Happy Gilmore off the table, because that would be, as I told you, like last time we spoke, recency bias. That's the one I've seen uh, the latest. My daughter and I watched that several times this summer. Um, so I would say Tin Cup out of the other ones that you've mentioned. I mean, I, I, I love Tin Cup. That's an absolute that's... classic movie as well. And then Caddyshack, you know, is is one that that it, like you know I grew up on with a name like Noonan. That that name is very prevalent <laughs> in the in the movie. So I heard a lot of Miss at Noonans in my life when I was yep. a kid growing up. And so Caddyshack is good too. But but yeah, I would say if you're making me pick one that's 
a little bit. Yeah, I like Bagger Vance too. Bagger Vance is not a bad movie. That's that's one I think kind of gets lost in the conversation. But I would say Tin Cup if you're going to take Happy Go. I the prefer. Table. I like Tin Cup. I yeah, think that that's a great movie. And yeah, I, I know I've taken uh, multiple drops uh, five in a row just to hit the right shot. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. Just 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 to know that I could do it and I couldn't get it there. Yep. Absolutely. And that's the only thing that really resonates with me. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that several times. Uh, what is your preferred? Yeah, we'll do it. You know what? We'll do a sales pitch here. What's your preferred right. brand of club? Oh, you know what? I or uh, ball. I currently am playing. Um, I'm playing pings. I, I've got some ping uh, G425 irons. They were last year's uh, Those model. Are nice club. You know, I I always wanted a set of pings. They're my first kind of like really nice set that I've. And I didn't buy the the nicest set of pings. I could have bought more expensive versions of what I got. But, uh, but it's the Indian and not the Arab. It's yeah, they're, that's they're, where I keep it. They are extremely, uh, extremely nice clubs. I, I think I am way more consistent with them. I actually lost a little bit of distance in comparison to my Nike coverts that I had, but I'm way more accurate, I'd say, with the pings. When I, uh, when I was a kid, that's what my dad played. He had like Ping I threes and Ping I fours or whatever. So. Those are really sought after right Yeah, now. Are, <laughs> no, are they? Are. Really? Well, my dad's like six seven, so his were always uh, an inch long. So I never even got to hit him. But for whatever reason, I just decided those must be the best clubs. That's, that's what my so my dad plays. So, so yeah, when it was time for me to buy my my first kind of like nice set, you know, I decided I'm gonna go with the Banks. Mine's and well. I've been happy with them. You know, I've noticed that same thing. I was hitting uh, Taylor made burners before, and then I upgraded to Mizuno blades, and I've definitely lost some distance, but right. it's more consistent. Yeah. Uh, which I'm okay with, because now instead of using my nine iron, I got to use my eight iron. Okay. Right. That's fine. Okay. And, with yeah. That. If that's your mindset, that is, that is totally fine. And, you know, I wish I could hit it straight every time. I could not. <laughs> <laughs> I had some struggles last week playing, but you know what? That's the that's the fun of playing golf, right? If everybody that's was right. great at it, then no, uh, it wouldn't be as what as would much the challenge be. And right. right. Yeah. That's you just. You just never know. Was it? Mark Twain said it was a, a good walk spoiled, I believe, something along those those terms. And yeah. Yes. I I, I don't know the actual quote. It's something right along those terms. A, a good walk spoiled, and a, a walk well spoiled, something along those lines. Basically, how, why are you guys wasting time getting frustrated with right. chasing this ball around when you could just be out enjoying nature and taking, right. <laughs> taking the nature walk? <laughs> but see, I, you know. We don't even walk anymore. We're I old, like chasing so the ball around. Right. I bet you I can hit in between those two trees. They're only five foot apart, but I bet you <laughs> I, can, I can split them. I can get it there. I know it. Too. How many times have we been in that scenario? Uh, you know, too many. Do you lay up or do you just go for it? You know, typically, since since I'm not usually playing for high stakes, go for it. <laughs> <Yeah. right? laughs> I already what I, paid 50 bucks to be out here. Right. As well just go for but that it. is what I try to talk to the kids about, though, is, is, you know, like, if I really was trying to go out and score the best score, I probably wouldn't even bring my driver with me. You know, so often these the kids, it's something that we're constantly talking about is, you know, they all want to just blast drivers, blast drivers. That is fun. I mean, well, I think everyone that golfs enjoys doing that. But if you're asking me to go out and shoot a low score and, and I need to hit fairways, I'm not going to hit my driver a whole lot. So... It is impressive, the technology, I will say that, <clears throat> that they've come up with in, in the drivers. Um, I still have a, a five wood that's like the Dick's Walmart brand, whatever. <laughs> Intact, just, it is, it looks like junk, but every single time I hit it, I can hit it 190 to 200 yards. You know exactly what it's doing. And I know where the ball is gonna go. It's right. gonna, I'm gonna hit a low stinger pretty much left to right. And there you go. Isn't that funny? And it's, it's funny how you learn that lesson because actually my four my four hybrid is is a used club that I bought. It's a ping, but it's it's probably at least a decade old. Right. That's probably my favorite club in my bag. It's the most <laughs> consistent club is the one I spent like forty dollars on. Right. And you just don't <laughs> care and you know every time you yeah, oh, yeah. it's gonna be consistent. Absolutely. And you might as well just use that at the tee every time. You really should. You know, that's what I, you know, I, I try to to explain to the kids that I know that you find the fairway two out of five, three out of five times. And when you do, it's awesome, it, it's great. But right. those other two times, you're behind a tree, you're hitting out of the out of the junk, you're not giving yourself a, a great opportunity on your next shot. Whereas if you would just go five iron, you'd probably have a six or seven iron yep. into the green. And you know, you could you could still get there and either two putt for par or, or maybe you can get up and down and still have a par putt. 
But, you know, it is what it is. The kids, they, uh, like the rest of us, they like the long wall, right? They like to drip it and rip it and, and swing away, but that is something we're constantly talking about. My favorite one, I like playing with my buddies. Yeah, I'm all flopped that up there. I don't think you are, dude. And I would just put it. No. <laughs> well, thank you, Phil Mickelson, for uh, everyone thinking that they every wet shot we hit now has to go yeah. 40 yards into the air and come straight down. And, you know, I actually grew up in a time when it was it was still okay to grab like an eight iron bump and run a shot. Yeah. You know, and, and that's if the lower to the ground, the less the less chance you got for shanking. It. Right. You know, and I, that's what I've tried to tell the kids. It's basically a putt motion. You know, you don't really have a whole lot to mess up. And you know, if you if you even listen to the pros talk, they enjoy kind of getting the ball in the green, and letting it roll because a it's going to roll better. But b you're reading your next putt too. You're kind of getting to see what the what the green's gonna be like when you have to putt. So, right. yeah, those are the two the two fights that we're always always kind of dealing with with high school kids. It seems like is less drivers and less flop shots. That's like my <laughs> wife. She wants to play. It, she'll be using a driver on the green. I just wanted to smoke the ball. Yeah. I'm like, dude, just okay. Yeah, just sit in the car. Yeah. Um, how do you think the Galesburg community plays into to this to the schooling, the actual golf game? I mean, obviously, this is a really tight knit community. Sure. Um, and I I know that we the last time we talked, I think we we've seen not so much of a huge increase, but there is an increase in the actual golf in this area. Sure. You know, I yeah, we've had a a big increase, and in, and like we spoke about, you know, golf is. Golf being popular in Galesburg is nothing new. You know, uh, Galesburg's had a pretty rich tradition of having some, some pretty good golf teams over the years on the the boys and girls side. Um, you know, having Swamataha, Bunker Lakes, Lake Bracken, three really nice courses in in the area um, definitely helped persist or participation as far as golf goes. Um, you know, I think that when I first got the, the head coaching job here, uh, this is my fifth year now, it wasn't uh it wasn't at a high point in terms of popularity it wasn't at a low point in any uh, way shape or form but um you know we were, we were graduating some kids who were kind of into it but then it was kind of a, a few skinny years and i feel like you know where we're at right now it's actually it's kind of at a high point again we had a pretty good couple of players came through the past few years and i think that they got a lot of their buddies in in the golf and so you know last Last spring, last summer, if you were out of Bunker Lakes, you know, on any given night, you would see, you know, my my guys out there playing, but you'd also see five or ten other boys, you know, varsity yeah. football, basketball guys that weren't out for the golf team, but that were just starting to kind of get bit by the bug that we talked about, the golf bug, and, and you now, so as far as like... And there's a lot more. Uh, yeah. A lot more kids it, I see out on the, on the course. You know, I think weekend. that's one benefit that, you know, COVID did a lot of bad those two years, but... I do think as far as the game of golf, it actually helped things because there was a while that golf was about the only thing that you can do. And I, I do think that, um, you know, there's a lot of people that maybe decided to give it a try or get back into it. And that was, that was where you could, couldn't hit the ball in the hole. They had a right, yeah, 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 yeah. You hit it, you win, okay. Yeah, that's right, yeah, you know what though, I'm king of the gimme, gimme so I was fine <laughs> with that. But, but yeah, so I mean, as far as students and, and kids being in the golf there's a lot of kids right now that are in the golf and they're not even all the kids that are on the golf team so. right so yeah i feel like golf's in a pretty good spot right now in the community um i said we're very lucky to have the three courses we have and then just right on the outskirts we outskirts of town we have a couple really nice courses too over a moment there's a yeah it has got some nice courses and oak run is a is a really nice course too so you know to have Five. Well, they're only an hour drive from TPC. Right, yeah. absolutely. It's, but to have five really nice courses, you know, three in town and then two more just within 15 minutes, you know, there's a lot of opportunities to play play golf on, on very nice courses around here. So. There's a lot of courses around here. Yeah. Val, I just played Valley View, and I actually I, I like that. <laughs> I'll be there in about three hours. That's yeah. where we're, we're having our uh, conference meet there. So we were supposed to be playing up at Kellogg tonight right. against Limestone and PND. But uh, so that got canceled, so I am taking this for a practice round at Valley View. I might be playing it myself here. About well, on on the, the tenth hole, uh, I have a ball that's completely shanked off to the right. All right. In the in the woods, just shy of the water. All right. I did not bother to go. <laughs> I'm gonna take a look, see if I'm not playing, then I'll it's be ball hunting. So. It's a yellow Pro V1. Oh, Pro V, that's a nice ball. Yeah, might be worth looking for. 
It, well, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> but you can find it. I, I, I agree with you, though. That's a really nice course. We had the opportunity to play it uh, last year. Uh, one, of our, one of our teachers and coaches here at the school um, has a place there on, on the back nine. You know, I think oh, it's yeah, like yeah, full yeah. 17. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's some people that have uh, trailers and cabs and stuff up there. And yeah, uh, one of our actually of our yeah, coaches has one. What I like there. about that hole, I'm glad you brought that up. You can hit whatever you want because if you hit that back of the hill, it will roll. It's gonna find its, its way down right back yeah. to the hole. But what a hidden yeah. gem of a course, right? I know. And you know, I mean, and you wouldn't. I never would have dreamed it was there. And I'd always heard there was a nice course over by Cambridge, but and I had eight, to see it before I really believed yeah, it. Yeah, it is beautiful. Eighteen is super long. I love that. Yes, I don't mind playing a long hole yeah. like that. Another another course that's really nice in this area that I finally got the chance to play is a Fire Lake. I took. The, oh, you I take, the, I take the kids to it about once a year. It seems like for, for competitions, but no, right. I met up with uh, one of my good friends. is from Rock Island. We kind of met in the middle and played Fire Lake this summer. That was a beautiful, beautiful. Fire Lake is it's a Jack Nip. That's a nice. The island green will definitely get in your head. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of those. I avoided all the fairway bunkers somehow. I played I played all right. Now, what I could not do was putt. Those greens are pretty fast compared to what I was used to. Yes, they are. So I did not putt well. But yeah, awesome course. It is. It's a ton of fun. And you know what? It's relatively inexpensive. Yeah, yeah. For, 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 for playing that kind of course, it's really not bad. Yeah. Oh, like you say, a Jack Nicholas course. I mean, right. Wow. So, all right. We good? All right, man. Jim, thank you. good to see you again. Made it out alive. Yep, good luck to you guys. Thank you, I appreciate it. If you need it. anything, you let us know.